Well, hello, I'm so glad to be here with Marty and Rachel Amos. Uh, over the last year, they have seen some massive transformation in their marriage, and I'd love it if you guys would just share kind of what, what was life like between the two of you a year ago? It was pretty horrible. I was, one particular night, I remember laying in my bed in a dark room. I didn't want to talk to anybody, didn't want to talk to him especially. Um, I just felt hopeless. I was reaching out to God, reading my Bible, praying, and just feeling hopeless and that there was no way to restore the trust between us. And so I reached out to get some resources to help us that Marty would relate to and that he would respond to well so that we could hopefully repair the relationship. So it sounds like you, one of the things that you did is you brought it into the light, that you weren't going to stay in the dark place anymore. No. What was it for you, Marty? What was the thing that you noticed in that year? What's been the transformation and just that trust level between the two? Realizing and learning how I needed to communicate with her and understand how she was feeling about things and lack of communication of words spoken to her, how they were affecting and hurting her, knowing that I needed to say more than three word sentences to help her understand things. That can be difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And three words is a lot. You'd rather just give the head nod, right? For sure. <laughs> so when you're talking about like trust that's been fractured in that process when the two of you were working through that, is there something, Rachel, that for you, there was a moment where you said, okay, now we can move towards each other and where trust can be rebuilt? Yes, I can remember the Easter service where we did communion and um, there were post-it notes on the table and we had been trying to make changes, but we were really relying on old habits during that time and they st it just wasn't working. And so I wrote on a post-it note, broken marriage, and went and put it on the cross and I left it there and I left it with God and I didn't take it back as I walked away. And mm -hmm. so it just really opened the door for me to be able to have him speak into our lives and make new habits moving forward. So the transition becomes no longer holding on to the brokenness, but saying I'm going to move towards restoration. Yes. Anytime that we have to process through our brokenness and our heartbreak, sometimes there's a deeper fracture in our hearts that has to be dealt with. And Rachel, you went through something over the last couple of years where you found some healing from something that's been deep in your past. Do you want to share how that happened? So I saw a flyer for a ministry here at Family Church called Surrendering the Secret. Um, I didn't know what it was. It didn't have a lot of detail on the flyer, but I suspected that it was for me. And so I signed up for it. And it's a Bible study on surrendering from abortion. And it was a really powerful Bible study, powerful ministry in my life. Um, it led me to probably the darkest place in my life and then the brightest place in my life. Tell me about that process. So as you're going through the Bible study, you learn a lot about yourself. Um, it's not just about the act of an abortion. It's about what it means to you and how it impacts your life. And there was a moment where I started thinking about my children and I love my children so much, they're so precious to me, and I had to finally admit to myself that I had another child, and I killed that child by my own choices. And I was in a pretty deep despair, um, very depressed, would come home and all I could do is lay in my bed and cry, and I didn't know how to come out of it. I didn't, didn't know that there was a good spot on the other side. And all I could do was pray and ask people to pray for me. What was that like for you, Marty, just being, trying to be a support and a love for her in the midst of that? It was a very helpless feeling trying to comfort her and not knowing or feeling like I was able to help her out of the funk she was in. So as you're in the middle of that, though, I know you don't stay there. No. So tell me about that, that process where that study takes you into the depths and then the finding of healing once you've surrendered that secret. So there was one of the homework assignments called At the Foot of the Cross, and you were supposed to picture yourself at the foot of the cross with Jesus and just write whatever words came to your heart. And it was just like a flood of pictures and words and emotions that came to me. And 
realizing that Jesus isn't removed from me. He is right here. I'm at his feet. Anytime I want to be, I am right at his feet. So it's not just knowing he's there for me in the good. It's knowing that he already knows my sin and there is no sin that's unforgivable. And I just pictured him taking that sin from me, me pulling away from the chains, not hammering the nail any longer into his feet and him absorbing that sin and freeing me, breaking me from those chains. And I was able to accept forgiveness from him at that point. And I know I have a child in heaven waiting for me and there's going to be a joyous reunion when we get there. What I'm hearing you say is that the, is the restoration came. There was a healing that wouldn't have happened if you hadn't walked through the brokenness. Absolutely not. It would never have been as powerful. I didn't realize how broken I was until I completely broke mm -hmm. so that I could completely heal.